Good morning, everyone. How you doing this morning? Um, this uh, probably the last one I do on a regular recording. I'm gonna start doing this from uh, a podcast pl platform, um, a bit more professionally, obviously. But um, unfortunately, before that happened, there's some uh, important things that I need to discuss with you guys. Um, what's going on in Chicago? All right, let's talk about a couple things. It's gonna be real quick, five minutes in and out. All right. In Chicago right now, we got all these protesters, or supposedly protesters, uh, going down, trying to rip down uh, Christopher Columbus's statue and get into conflict with the police. Now, let me say this first. I have been for taking down statues, but there's a process. We live in a country with rule of law, bottom line. When you go and you start throwing bottles of, of ice water and you know throwing rocks and you know trying to assault police officers to go tear down something you're breaking the law you're not a protester just as simple all right protesting is to go to city hall and demand that the city council or the mayor take down something that i could get with but you guys going down here you know trying to fight the police and then when the police fight back you on facebook or youtube or twitter or whatever you get on crying talking about you ain't do nothing wrong and you know i'm just protesting no you're not protesting you're trying to destroy public property that people's tax money is paid for that's just that simple that being said i get it you you have a problem all right let me say this straight out i was one of the biggest proponents of taking down confederate statues again by city by by city by city assemblies or by state assemblies or by the federal government you know you go to your representatives in government and you tell them what you want we want these statues of confederate traitors down take them down that's what we want and then it gets done it's just that simple that's called action and honestly speaking all this running after christopher columbus statue look you guys on this side of uh, the the movement you know you wanted reform and stuff like that i want reform too i'm with you on it but you took whatever goodwill you had and you you don't you don't throw it out the window to tear down christopher columbus statue i don't get it instead of working towards actionable policy to actually change things if you have a problem with the criminal justice system you want to see reform i get that go out there protest make your voice heard but this ain't that this ain't doing that. All this is doing is going to have a net negative. And we already see the net negative. You got the president posturing about sending, uh, you know, 150 federal uh, federal officers to Chicago. And let's be clear about that. That's all politics. You know, in Illinois, we got a lot of police. We got state police. We got county police. You have sworn officers and corrections, both state and county, if you really needed extra police. Honestly speaking, if somebody really wanted extra police for Chicago, they could get it through the state police or the Cook County Sheriff's Department if they really wanted to. If they really wanted to, you could get some of the uh, sort teams from both state uh, and, uh, and county level or in municipality level if you really wanted that type of protection or you wanted additional police services. So asking for it from the federal government is a political move trying to front off the mayor of Chicago. I get that. If that's a game you want to play, you know. I get it, but that is a political move, so let's not act like it's a public safety situation or even a concern for public safety. That being said, I'm going to end this up with a little history since it's coffee and uh, history with Richard Graves. We're going to get to the point with the history of things. The Confederacy, traitors, just as simple. Looking at them at the time frame that they lived in, okay? General Lee went to West Point. People went to West Point with him. They, at the end of the war, General Montgomery Meigs, one of those generals, uh, quartermaster general to the United States Army at that time, wanted Lee and the rest of those generals and some of the colonels, I'm sure, executed for their treason. And let's be clear, at that point in history, treason against your country was serious. Military code and honor and loyalty, all that few good men stuff was very real. All right, It wasn't an abstraction, it wasn't a joke. That's how they got down. So they really wanted to execute um, General Lee, just that simple. He was considered a traitor. Jefferson Davis considered a traitor. And bottom line, statues of traitors shouldn't fly. It's just that simple. Um, you don't see statues of Paul Revere in England. Why? Because at the time, he was a, a subject of the crown and he was a traitor for doing what he did. So you're not going to see a statue of Paul Revere in England, and rightfully so. He was considered a traitor, just like these Confederates should be considered traitors. That's it. That's all. I'm not going to go deeper into that. Now, as far as Christopher Columbus, I'm going to say this. I'm not saying if you're for or against taking down a statue, understand this. Christopher Columbus 
was was his arrival was at the end of the Renaissance, basically 1592, right? Or sorry, 1492. In 1492, we're, we're basically at the end of the Renaissance. We haven't even started the Enlightenment yet. All right, so the world was a very different place, and expectations for people were very different. I don't care if you were European, African, Native American, Amerindian, First Nations, Asian, whatever you want to call yourself. At that, at the end of the Renaissance, the world was just now getting an understanding of what. Of, of, of concepts like liberty and justice and equality for you I mean, these things wouldn't really get find their form until the enlightenment so you guys are judging christopher columbus on modern standards and it just don't work that way you know it, it it doesn't to me it's just you know feel how you feel you can protest peacefully you can you know advocate for removal of the statues but understand there's a very big difference between the traitors when we're talking about people who were considered traitors at the time that they were serving in the military in the 1800s and a very big difference between talking about a sailor and explorer at the end of the Renaissance era, you know, coming to the new world, the things he uh, is accused of doing. Um, and honestly, people want to talk about, you know, you know, how he attacked or how he did Native, uh, Native Americans or Amerindians or First Nations people. The fact is, you know, the Aztecs, the Incas, the Mayans, they wasn't too nice either. They were doing all kinds of things to the other Native tribes around them who really didn't care for them too much and actually sided with the Spanish conquistadors uh, to get rid of those empires. So it's not, it's the bottom line, it's not black and white. So slow your roll. And put your energy towards actionable policy. You going around trying to tear down statues. All right, we get that. All right, we get it. But that's just bottom line. That's not the rule of law. That's against the law. And you should be dealt with accordingly. If you want to go fight and attack the police to tear down a statue of Christopher Columbus. If you really want to get that done, go protest City Hall peacefully. That's how. And then demand change. Bottom line, even better way of protesting vote let's say you ask these aldermen to do it they don't do it then vote them out not complicated then the next group might listen that being said um this was a quick one just wanted to touch base on those things uh look forward to talking to you again like i said we're switching platforms uh we're gonna have uh you know um it, it'd be nice we're gonna have guests on and everything and i appreciate you guys checking this out take care god bless and be safe